Please welcome Steve Miranda. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. It's, it's great to see everybody in person, as I'm sure you've heard several times this week. So if you're here to, for Steve Miranda and Fusion, you're in the right place. If you are here for the Steve Miller Band, you're also in the right place, you're just a little early. Don't leave, let's we'll just consider this a pre-party, okay? So we're just gonna have a good time and, and roll, roll through it. Okay, so we're gonna have a couple sections today. We're first gonna start off by talking about our future direction. It's an area of extending our applications through partners that we are greatly excited about and we think it's gonna benefit all of you as customers and it's gonna evolve very quickly. And then we're gonna transition and I'm gonna give you updates of what we've been up to over the last year with some highlights that all of you as customers or those of you who are considering being customers will get great benefits from. And along the way, we're gonna hear from three customers, two live, and we're also gonna hear from a partner and show some videos. So we got a packed agenda to go in through it. Now, what we've talked about for a long, long time is what one key component of our SaaS applications is to innovate with speed so that all of us could be ready to change and pivot in an uncertain world. And what I used to talk about is disruption. And you used to hear about Amazon disrupting of industry or Uber or Apple. And everybody I talked to from business either wanted to become a disruptor or were concerned about being disrupted and had to react extremely quickly. And to do so, like Oracle, we went from a product company to a services company. You need business systems HCM, ERP, supply chain, CX, to move quickly. Well, I don't have to, unfortunately, I don't have to use that example anymore because all of us over the last two years in our personal lives and our business lives have felt a pressure to change and change immediately. And the one common thread to paraphrase or frankly steal from Safra's presentation earlier in the week was that companies and individuals that embraced the challenge adjusted quickly actually came out better. And every single organization we work with and every single organization that you deal with had to become digital and deal with customers digitally. And by the way, all of you as consumers, every, all of your expectations got raised during that time. We expect now that with our voice, we don't even use our phone. We just say a voice to something in the air in our house and a pizza shows up 15 minutes later. It's a very different mood. It's a very different way of working. Now, we continue to have challenging times, whether it's concern about economic issues, inflation, whether it's the tax changes in the UK, we have a war in Europe, lots and lots and lots of issues, lots of continued uncertainty. In addition to that, we continue to have tremendous advancements in technology, some of which we're gonna show you here today. And the overriding message for all of this is, really what we wanna enable as your partners is your ability to unlock opportunities and adjust quickly regardless of what the change is, because as we've just found out over the last couple of years, it's really impossible for anybody to predict what the next couple of years will be like, but it's one thing for certain, it's gonna change, and that speed of change is only gonna continue and get faster and faster. Okay, for the first part of the session, we are quite excited, I'm extremely excited, to make a brand new announcement of a set of capabilities that we feel is unprecedented and it will change the way the world does B2B commerce. And we are announcing today, in partnership with JP Morgan and FedEx, a brand new set of B2B commerce capabilities that is pervasive in our applications and available to all of our customers. What do we mean by this and what is it? So in today's world, B2B commerce, I would say, is semi-automated, and after this presentation, I think you will say it's very, very outdated. So how does it work? Okay. My left-hand column over here, all of you are gonna be someone who buys something. And you buy something from this row. So what do you do? You send over a purchase order. This column sends an invoice this direction, but then you actually have to pay that. So you all go to a bank, you guys are the rich folks. So you go to a bank and you send the payment over here. Now once that payment is sent, 
you have to ship products to your customer, so you go to a logistics provider. But wait a minute, you have to send them a purchase order so they know to send it. They send, ship the goods, they invoice you, you go back to the bank, the bank sends a payment. Now, most of this is automated through our ERP systems, except then you have to do cash reconciliation on one side, you have to do invoice matching on the other side to a PO, you have to do uh, uh, bank reconciliation, cash application, lots and lots and lots of activity today. We're gonna change how all that works. How are we going to do that? With Oracle, all of you, all of the Oracle Fusion customers, all the NetSuite customers, we have over 40,000 buyers and sellers, including some of the largest suppliers in the world, which I'll show you in a moment, including most of the largest banks and financial institutions in the world, and including the largest logistics providers in the world. So basically, many customers, many suppliers, many banks, and many logistics providers across the board. And much as Larry described, to solve this problem, we aren't solving it at Oracle alone. We're solving it in combination with our partners. And much like Larry and Safra and Clay talked about, the way we do this is because all of our partners are all in a cloud as well, starting with JP Morgan. So JP Morgan provides payment services, native banking services, corporate card services, and automated financing, and soon to be much, much more based on feedback that all of you give to us, integrated to the ERP. Second, with FedEx. FedEx providing logistics services and shipping and logistics operations. But enough of me trying to talk about it alone. I'm pleased to welcome on stage Takis Georgiokopoulos, who's the global head of payments at JP Morgan. And let's watch a short video about JP Morgan first. This is money. Money is a catalyst for change. This is change. Change that moves everyone and every business forward, from building blocks to blockchain. Powering these companies to accept, hold, and move money instantly. This is currency, currency that can't be hacked. Igniting embedded payments and new economies. This is a single payment, split a hundred ways. This is businesses ordering what someone else is making. And this is all powered by the highest level of security. This is to buy and sell things without ever touching anything. This is what a face looks like. It just paid for this, and this, and this. This is your car. This is turning it into your wallet to pay for your cappuccino with foam. This is growing your business from the smallest to the largest. This is all the business of change around the world, out of this world, that leads to things like this and this. This is every achievement there is to look back on. This is another to look forward to. JP Morgan Payments. That's progress. Hey, Tucker. Welcome. Good to see you. Thank yeah. you. Takas, thanks for joining us here, especially the launch, this uh, partnership we're so excited about. Um, clearly, everybody knows, familiar with JP Morgan, but maybe you can give them some inside information as, you know, a little bit more about well, what, is, what do you do, what is your role, and the size and scope of your business and payments. Sure. So, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. I knew about this event. I never imagined this. It's by far the largest event that I've gone through post-COVID. It's amazing. And, <laughs> Congratulations, you guys, for, uh, uh, for doing something like that. Um, I, I don't need to talk. I've been told it takes thousands of people to, to plan and execute that. <laughs> so um, I, I don't need to talk about JP Morgan, the largest retail bank in the world in, uh, in the US uh, at Chase, the largest wholesale bank in the world at JP Morgan. 
but our business, JP Morgan Payments, represents about 10% of the bank uh, in terms of revenues, profits, and employees. We have about 25,000 people. But it is a business that operates at a tremendous global scale. Uh, my two favorite stats, we move $10 trillion every day, which is a little bit more than $10 million per second. And at peak times, somewhere around Thanksgiving, we move 5,500 transactions per second as people shop for their you know, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas shopping. Uh, we operate in every country, every currency, every payment method. We serve the vast majority of global Fortune 500 companies, as well as hundreds of thousands of uh, mid-sized and small businesses in the US. And our goal is to always look for how can we make our customer lives easier? How can we bring innovation and solutions for our customers? So that last part is really key, as you thought, that's a theme of this whole conference. But before we get that, I think the audience would be thrilled to understand a lot of uncertainty, a lot of economic uncertainty. From your perspective, in a unique perspective, with so much transactions throughput, what are top of mind issues in your business today? Sure, so for us, there are always kind of three, three things that we are thinking about. The first one is keeping our customers safe. Whether it is fraud, whether it is cybersecurity, whether it is geopolitical risks, whether it is hurricanes, whether it is COVID, whether it's people working from home or from wherever else, we need to continue to process that 10 trillion a day. It is about a third of money flow in the global economy for whatever reason. Uh, keeping our customers safe, we do that at a seven sigma accuracy. You can never be satisfied, even at Seven Sigma, it means that sometimes things happen, but we continue to strive to make that number better. The second area is around um, risk management. Our clients, especially the larger ones, operate in multiple parts of the world. They manage complex, complex supply chains, multiple bank accounts, multiple currencies, multiple effects exposures, and they need ways to have real-time visibility and the ability to forecast and understand their cash positions and manage those and move their supply chains when they need to build resiliency or they want to move, they have to move from one part of the world to another very, very quickly. So helping them do that is the second one. And then the third one is delivering solutions. Whether it is how our clients connect to us, whether it is the API connectivity or the ERP connectivity, which we're going to talk about, whether it is industry vertical solutions, and if any of you are here in Vegas next week, we're going to showcase at Money 2020 our vision for connected car and for um, bringing together online and uh, real life gaming. Um, so all of those things, and obviously it's, it's a big space of innovation and it's something that we know we cannot do on our own. And the power of innovation is really in the network that you can create. And that's why we are super excited to work with a company of the size and, uh, and scale of Oracle. So, so now let's drill in a little bit to what we're doing together and how we're going to make things better for our, our customers. So basically every one of you who has an ERP system of any type, any system, be Oracle or not, you connect it to a bank account to do the payment. And this t oftentimes takes four to six weeks, even in the cloud, because you are going from our ERP system, you're calling your bank, you're establishing a secure connection, you're doing a, a, essentially an IT project. So can you take us through, with our combined efforts now doing this together, how are we approaching it differently and how the what will the customer see? So l let me just start with a story, right? So yesterday night I got my iPhone 14 Pro Plus or whatever it is. I changed iPhones every like two or three years. So I got it. You put the new iPhone next to the old iPhone. You say yes a couple of times. Wait a couple of hours. It's all done, right? Why is it all done? Well, interoperability between the phones and all of the information is on the cloud. Now juxtapose that with a large company that operates with multiple banks or is in the process of transitioning between a bank and another one or an ERP system moving to the cloud, etc. And you get a great JP Morgan banker or salesperson to tell you how amazing we are and how much money you are going to save in real-time payment systems and blockchain and coins and all of that. And the CFO gets excited and the treasury team starts thinking about, oh my God, I need to go and update every bank account, every information, every uh, who is authorized signatory in each one of my accounts, et cetera, et cetera. Four weeks yeah. is a good case. <laughs> We've also seen, you know, months. Okay. 
So what we are trying to do together with Oracle is really at scale solve that problem. So the most difficult part of dealing with JP Morgan is pronouncing my last name if you have to, right? So Fusion and JP Morgan payments will work as one. You upgrade the version of Fusion, JP Morgan accounts get updated automatically. You change from one bank to JP Morgan, your information gets updated automatically. So we're hoping it's going to be like changing iPhones. Well, that's, so when we reached out to, to uh, uh, Takas' team, they said, well, wait a minute, all these customers who've been calling us as they move the cloud and we've doing this four week process, we get to automate that? And we're like, yeah, that's what we want to do. It was like, sign us up. So now, next favorite thing, once we get it connected though, so that's just a kind of a logistics, it's four to six weeks, but we want to explore some transactions. One of the transactions is not a fan favorite, especially all of you who are not used to traveling, you're going to have to go back and do expense reports. So we think with this integration now, we have that financing capability, we have the integration directly to JP Morgan and your APIs, again, our cloud to your cloud. How do you envision how are we going to change expense reporting? So first of all, what we really liked about uh, working with Oracle is that we speak the same language. We speak the language of cloud, of APIs, and of continued innovation. So I think what we are doing with cards is pro hopefully going to be step one of many more ideas that our teams are going to think about, or even more better, we are going to hear from our clients and go out and deliver. So I thought about that as I was flying here to Vegas. So I, I'm not a very well organized person. I'm sure other people are better. But I remembered when I was an associate, I started my career at McKinsey. And like every consultant, I would travel Monday through Thursday, come back Friday and spend half my day doing expense reports and looking for my receipts, some in my wallet, some in my pocket, some. <laughs> uh, fast forward 25 years later, so the good news is I have an assistant, and the second is uh, some of the receipts now come via email. But the underlying issue is the same. So I went for my first post-COVID trip to Asia, came back, gave my assistant the receipts, she calls me, she says they're in Japanese. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I have no idea what this receipt is for. <laughs> Um, so what, what we are hoping to do is make this thing really a thing of the past. The, the work that we are doing together with Oracle, in my example, I went to Japan, I went to a restaurant or taxi or whatever this thing was, I get a notification on my phone, I speak to the virtual assistant on the wallet of my phone, I say what the transaction is. If your company is a bank, then you may need to upload the receipt to the app. You are done. Then Oracle takes on the back end all of that information, your expense report is magically filed, you are done. Your finance team is happy, the procurement team is happy, your control team is happy because they're sure you didn't get a dinner that's too expensive. I'm really looking forward to this one. So you, you teased a little bit going forward, but let me just recap so everyone's clear. So now all of you are customers, you, you don't have to do anything. As part of your update, you're gonna have an icon, it says JP Morgan, click on it, obviously give your account information, you're automatically connected, our cloud to their cloud for banking. Use their credit card, just like you get your alerts on your phone today from Amex or any other card, JP Morgan card, you get it directly from JP Morgan, but it's not just JP Morgan, it is directly integrated to Fusion automatically, you don't have to enter anything, it's there for your expense reporting. Now, on a go forward basis, something I know you and I are quite excited about in the audience, how might we work together for more sophisticated transactions or payments like financing and automate that further? So, as I said, the good news is we are speaking the same language and, you know, as um, we were saying before, we both started because we got a call from our respective CEOs <laughs> saying, you guys figure out a way to work together and, you know, we did. Uh, but in the process, as I said, we, we realized that we do see the world in the same way and we do see innovation at the core of what we do. And I think the most exciting thing for me is that between Oracle and JP Morgan, you have two companies with tremendous client networks. And therefore, think about what you can do when you bring those networks together to simplify supplier information, vendor information, financing information, payment information, cash flow forecasting, real-time visibility in you know, real currency, metaverse currency, or anything else that may come our way. So I'm very excited. We've proved the concept. We've proved the first two use cases, which are very, very exciting for us. And I think you will continue to see from us new and interesting ideas uh, on the payment and financing side. And please bring us your ideas, bring us your pay po pain points. And I promise on behalf of both of us, we'll do our best to go out and deliver. 
I think Takas and I have a special relationship because right after the phone call between Larry Ellison and, and Jamie Dimon, I immediately got a call from uh, Mr. Ellison, and I'm sure you got, immediately got a call from Multiple. Mr. Dimon. <laughs> Multiple, exactly. So um, uh, there was panic set in on two offices on two coasts uh, going forward. So Takas, thank you very much. We very much look forward to the partnership. And most importantly, we look forward for you, our customers, getting more automation, and then as you start to receive that automation, giving us feedback because we're both excited to deliver more and more services to you to make B2B commerce fully automated. Takas, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. And by the way, I think that's just getting started. We want to continue, hopefully if people see the theme of the conference, which is extending to have complete business automation, extending that through Oracle as well as partners, extending that through multi-cloud, in a modern way that frankly, all of you should expect it to work. And as we roll it out, again, automatically to all of our customers, just through the update, at no fee, so you all get it, start using it, and give us feedback and reiterate. So we're very quite, quite excited about it. So let me shift gears now a little bit to what about today, and what have we been up to, and what are some highlights that you all should be aware of in Fusion applications? And we're gonna structure this as, we're quite proud in that we believe we provide everything you need to run your business and run it nimbly to be able to react to those changes I talked about before. We deliver innovation that matters. Matters not only to you for your bottom line, but also matters in terms of corporate citizenship, both in what we provide you and how we operate ourselves. And 100% committed to your success, customer focused, and I'm gonna have some customers come on stage to give some examples of that. What do I mean by all of these sections? First of all, everything you need. So we believe we have the most complete portfolio from ERP, including supply chain and consolidations, HCM, including payroll, benefits, talent management, recruiting, supply chain management and manufacturing, both process and discrete across multiple industries, and customer experience from sales, service, and marketing. But we allow you to adopt that suite to the extent you want, at the pace you want, and which pillars you want each and every time. And as we go through this, I'll give you several examples. But in addition to that, we are the only application vendor that is also in the technology business. Now everybody here is on the, probably from the application side. Why do you care that we are in the technology business? Well, over the last 18 months, and in the next three months, we will have migrated all of our SaaS customers again, just as part of the normal update, to our OCI Generate 2 infrastructure. Again, what does that mean, why do I care? You've all received brand new data center, brand new machine, Exadatas, brand new version of the database, brand new version of the operating system, brand new network, brand new network security, brand new block storage. I could go on and on and on as part of your update. So anything that used to be known as technical debt, when you used to manage your own applications, oh, application's getting old, I got old hardware. Application's getting old, I got to update the network. I've got a security issue, I've got to update this operating system, I've got to have a patch to the database. All of it is done, and done automatically, and done continuously for all of our customers. And the results give you much more secure infrastructure, it's tremendously helped our availability, and on average, because of new networking, new storage, new computers, our customers have improved their performance by 30% on the clicks into the user interface. But because we are in the infrastructure business as well, all of you as our application customers get this as normal course of action. As our technology improves, you inherit it automatically and you see those benefits. To show you a little bit of what it looks like, let's roll a short video of our brand new Redwood user interface.
looking great. Now, I talked about what we have in the completeness of sweep, but some of you may be sitting there saying, yes, but ERP, I got it. You have GL, APAR. Yes, I got HR. But I need these specialty applications. I need something that just to extend, uh, something that Oracle's not going to build and never going to build. How do I do that? How do I do it in a comprehensive way? Well, again, today we're launching our applications platform, which is really a combination of best in class tools, both Visual Builder for, for professional developers, as well as Apex for low code tool for you to develop a front end for applications that we don't provide. In addition to that, we provide you our Redwood templates. So all of the beautiful look and feel that you saw behind me, page templates, components, to allow you to design those extension applications and have it look exactly like the Fusion apps, because they, in fact, are the exact tools and components that we use to build our applications. So you basically extend it. You have to do no extra work to make it look and feel identical in an open way, both high code and low code. And in addition to that, we provide you the APIs to the applications so that you can integrate and have a full end-to-end -end data flow. So the largest and most complete suite available, now extending that to partners like JP Morgan and FedEx and allowing you the application platform to further extend for that last mile set of applications, the most complete suite or everything you need. So who is taking advantage of this? And I wish I could do this slide justice, and I know there'd be some of you, but what about me? So I'm just going to read a few of these because we are just proud of you, our customers, and what you have accomplished in healthcare. We have Cleveland Clinic, a personal favorite of mine. I'm the executive sponsor. I'm on a call, well, I used to be on a call weekly with them. Now they're live and, and rolling, so it's, it's not as often. Mount Sinai, Cedar, Mount Sinai, Cedar Sinai, Kaiser Permanente has been a great partner of ours in HCM and running payroll in a very sophisticated, very large environment. Humana, I can go on and on. In financial services, when I mentioned before that the majority, it's really a who's who. JP Morgan Chase, I always mentioned, we'll talk to them in just a bit. Citi, Bank of America, American Express, UBS, Vanguard, the largest mutual fund in the world, HSBC, PNC Bank, Westpac, Macquarie Bank, who we were proud to have here as a guest uh, speaking on our behalf uh, during this conference. Uh, again, I can go on and on in those customers. What we call digital economy customers. So you might think, well, those are big customers. That's what Oracle's had. They used to have Oracle. They moved over. Newer companies who've gone really started very, very recently relative to Oracle and others. Again, a who's who, Zoom, Meta, Lyft, Airbnb, Uber, Alibaba, Priceline, Twitter, Snap. Again, apologize for leaving people out, but I think you get the idea. In terms of hospitality and logistics, I mentioned that we have logistics customers. I think you guys were the logistics column. DHL, UPS, um, uh, FedEx. Uh, we have the largest ports in the world, including DP World, Port of Singapore, our customers. Most of the hotels that you've been in this week, Caesars, MGM Resorts, all run Oracle applications. In smaller uh, industries, including gaming, groceries. If you've bought groceries anytime in the United States or in the UK, chances are those people were paid by Oracle HCM and did close their books in Oracle ERP. Tesco, Saintsbury's, the cooperative in the UK, Albertsons, Kroger, amongst others in the US. So think about that. On your trip here, if you stayed in a hotel, if you packed a snack with groceries, or maybe ate at McDonald's or Chick-fil-A or Wendy's, I would leave out the healthcare customers, but hopefully none of you went to a hospital. Every step along the way, you worked with your peers who are running our applications. And it is all of you who drive those last mile requirements and who drive us to have hundreds of features in every product area every quarter. But enough of me talking about the customers or customer success. It's my pleasure to welcome uh, Javier Echavay, who is the Chief Financial Officer of Heathrow Airport. Javier. Great to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you. So, 
So Javier, I mean, Heathrow Airport probably needs no introduction, and people have either, in fact, many people probably flew through Heathrow to get here. But maybe you give your background in the organization and some statistics that people may not be aware of with Heathrow. Great. Well, it's fantastic to be here, and I can tell you, Steve, you have been today much more successful filling this place than myself, <laughs> trying to fill terminals over the last two years. <laughs> so next time, rather than sitting here, come to London, please. So obviously, Hydro is the only hub airport in the largest aviation market in the world. But more importantly, we are the gateway of the UK to global growth. UK, huge economy, fifth largest economy of the world. And we are the largest port as well. So 40% of the exports by value come out of Hydro, typically in the belly of the aircraft. So salmon, diamonds, even cars traveling just a few inches below your bottoms. <laughs> so next time, watch it out. <laughs> so obviously, uh, operationally, we, opera we operate the two busiest runways in the world. We partner with 80 airlines. And Hydro itself is a small city, 400 companies working for a single purpose, which is giving passengers the best airport service in the world. And uh, it's a complex city, and we will talk about all the things that we are, we are doing, but uh, I think enough for the introduction. Well, I think it's an interesting way to give people perspective. It really is like a small city and a complicated small city. So, you know, the last two years have been very, very interesting. What, what have they been like for you from the Heathrow perspective and the business perspective? Um, can you give us some of the challenges and, and, and what you've experienced? Well, I, th I think we have got few challenges over the last few years, but probably one of the challenges that we had just before the pandemic was uh, getting ready to grow. So one of our successes is that by becoming so popular uh, by passengers, actually we became very congested over the last few decades. Aviation capacity in the southeast, uh, in the southeast of England is, is very full. And after many decades of consultation, finally we got approval by the government to expand as an airport. Obviously, huge program, 20 billion pounds infrastructure program that was going to enable us to really double the size of the organization in just 10 years. So the challenge was grow 2x in 10 years. <laughs> but then suddenly the pandemic hit, and uh, obviously 98% of our revenue collapsed literally overnight. Very challenging, very challenging for me. Even my kids were joking with me and saying, well, Daddy, if your job is about counting money, what the hell are you doing these days? There's no money to count for. But actually, it has been through the effort of everyone across the airport, we have managed to survive. One of the things that we didn't stop was the process of transformation that we started just before the pandemic. Well, so that, I mean, it's kind of amazing. You went from, you have to double very quickly to all of a sudden you have to operate on 2% of what you were used to operating on. Yeah. Now, you picked Oracle, obviously, before the pandemic for the objective. Maybe give the audience a little bit of why you picked Oracle and, and what you expected to use us for and then how that has changed. Well, I think, I think many people believe that uh, Hydro is an airport, but actually we are not. We are a service company. And service is provided by people for people. So at the end of the day, getting assets to talk to each other is the easiest part of what we do. It's about getting people using data and making better decisions off the back of that data, what really uh, makes our challenge even more, even more fun. So I was telling that we were full for many, many years. And actually, when you have been full for many, many years, you haven't exercised enough the muscle of growth. And this is where Oracle came in. Having better data, better tools to our own people have allowed us to really start to experiment what a growth organization does. If I can give you just two examples, power of data in the hands of our people are really allowing people in the front line to read better what customers are expecting. But the second even more critical decision, as an airport, I'm passionate about infrastructure. What we do is connecting people and businesses. And by doing that, we enable 11 out of the 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. But at the same time, one of the things that science has demonstrated over the last few years is that our activity, together with airlines, are contributing to global warmth. So the challenge for us is how we are going to protect the benefits of aviation in a world free of carbon. And that requires us to not only optimize against a currency, sterling pounds, but also to optimize against a carbon-adjusted sterling pounds. 
And this is where Oracle is becoming extremely helpful. Okay, so just kind of recap the challenges. You've got to get to carbon neutral in the aviation industry. Yep. You have to deal with the pound issue, which anybody who's followed news lately, that's a challenge. You have to double in size, and then you had to react to this up and down 98%. Sounds like an easy job. Okay, so, <laughs> so beyond that, how, what have you accomplished so far through the implementation? And we're extremely proud to be associated with you and all part of that, but maybe share with the audience, so, you know, what are the big benefits that you've achieved so far? Well, I think what we have implemented in terms of scope, we are running Fusion applications on, on top of the Oracle Cloud infrastructure. So we have delivered financials, we have delivered human capital management, supply chain management, but also a BRM. So we have not full, but a big of the whole lot. Uh, so we, I mentioned earlier, we are a complex city. Yeah. We have many different people running in different payrolls. We have to read and connect millions of assets to really make the magic of Hydro happening every day. And that requires data, data at the right time, in the right hands, to really unlock passenger satisfaction. Okay, that's great. And then how do you see, uh, well, maybe two-part question. How did you view the Oracle relationship, or how did you view Oracle before the cloud journey? And then what do you see our relationship now? I guess I lied, three questions. And how do you see it going forward? <laughs> well, I think question number one, I think we have been in a partnership with Oracle for many, many years. As in any partnership, there has been moments of love, <laughs> moments of crisis, so you have to get ready for these things. And one of the things that we learn is that um, delivering on the cloud is a very, very different thing. Uh, my first implementation of Oracle, I think we were a different organization. Oracle was different, Hydro was different, and we were co-creating probably not the right thing to really unlock customers. And I, I love playing tennis, and one of the things I like playing tennis is that you really play better when you have a great partner. And we are playing better every, every day. I think in terms of how do I see um, the partnership going forward, to help me explain in that, I have Sami helping me bring in a little token <laughs> of gratitude to Steve. So. This isn't on a script. But <laughs> completely out of a script. This is the <laughs> magic of the life. <laughs> So, you mentioned earlier, we are living in a world that is changing, is volatile, is difficult. Uh, we are facing a very complex economic, social, political environment, and it's tough. I think you just need 30 seconds of app news to get fully depressed. But the reality is, one of the things I learned many, many years ago is that you cannot control events outside your company, but what you can control is how you choose to react to those events. Is in that microsecond that you choose your attitude, you, you choose your decision, so you can become the alchemist, making huge challenges, feeling like fantastic opportunities. So that's really the power of every single organization. So when I was young, young girl, I would say, I was fascinated by superheroes. I read the comics, I like all of them. But my favorite by far was this little fellow. <laughs> Not so little, Spider-Man. And uh, behind this childish comic, one of the things uh, I learned was probably one of the most profound learnings in business for me. He used to say that with great power comes great responsibility. At Hydro, we have huge responsibility. We are the national gateway of the UK. We have to measure our service every single day against passengers. We have to decarbonize aviation. We have to protect the planet. And more importantly, we have to transform the life of our own employees every single day. We have to make them feeling fulfilled and grow in a career rather than just having a job. That's the responsibility that we have. But we cannot do this alone. And I think that this is where, where Oracle comes in. You are helping us to unlock the power of data, supercharging our own powers. So with great power comes great responsibility. Um, for this partnership to continue working, what I need from you is to keep helping us, charging our powers every single day. And on the back of that, we will be able to deliver responsibly our vision to people and planet. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Javier. Thank you, Steve. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you.
Uh, Cormac, I think you're on mute. Yeah. I just want everybody comfortable. I don't think I've had an hour without somebody saying that in the last three years. So get yourself off mute. We'll be okay. Everybody comfortable still? Everybody? Okay. All right. Let's segue over into some more details. I mentioned earlier briefly, we deliver hundreds of features every quarter to our customers. We've just launched 22D as per normal every quarter. Three months from now will be 23A. Three months from there will be 23B. I think you guys get the rhythm. And part of that are some strategic solutions. Let me give you a few details of a, a couple. First off, Larry talked at length about healthcare and really talked about two dimensions of healthcare. One is taking the Cerner applications and extending that from things like uh, trials uh, and other areas. But the second key part was extending Cerner and connecting it to the ERP applications. And we're adding functionality in Fusion really in two elements. One is in supply chain management. And essentially what, the way it works today is you have a hospital system. In the hospital, they schedule appointments, you have surgeries, you have things that happen as all of us, we go to the hospital or our friends or family go to the hospital. Unfortunately, hospitals are far from working like a manufacturing plant or like any other process where you need goods and equipment to deliver those services. So what gets used and what gets scheduled has very little to no connection and certainly no product connection to the ERP system, what we provide also, inventory systems, supply chain planning systems, et cetera. So it's a very manual, laborious process. And unfortunately and sadly, all of us, regardless of where you live in the world, pay for this. Either pay for it in dollars and cents through inefficiencies or pay for it on things like, I'm sorry, we had to reschedule your surgery or I'm sorry, we have to reschedule your appointment because goods or services aren't there provided. So quite simplistically, we are building a connection between Cerner and what actually happens in the hospital and fusion supply chain from procurement, inventory management, supply chain planning. And we're building that in an open way so that even if you're using Cerner, Epic, or any other hospital provider system, you get that benefit of end-to-end -end supply chain planning to avoid the costly errors we have today. Once again, common theme, taking a semi-automated, silo semi-automated process, extending that both through our investments with Cerner and then partners or open areas, other hospital systems. Very, very similar, in that same surgery, in that same appointment, you also need people. Caregivers, therapists, doctors, nurses. Those people have schedules. They take vacations. They have regulations. You're not allowed to work more than certain hours a week for your own protection. They have union regulations where they have to work certain areas or not certain areas. They have qualifications where they have to be certified on different procedures at a certain time to be qualified to do it. Once again, unfortunately today, two completely siloed systems. What actually happens in the hospital and then the HCM system. And then unfortunately for any of you who are caregivers, or who know caregivers, we also pay their payroll out of HCM. And what happens when you have what they do and the time incorrect? The payroll's incorrect, which means you have doctors and nurses, instead of caring for patients, are spending time correcting payroll and giving, no, no, I didn't work those hours, I worked these hours. See, it says right here, I was in surgery. And we have that information in the hospital system in Cerner and we're building out capabilities to connect it end-to-end -end Cerner to HCM. Very strategic solution for healthcare and just one example of an, or another example of extending what we have for fully automating processes. That's one big area. The second big area, and this is probably the area where we have the most innovation quarter after quarter after quarter, is in our HCM area. And again, don't have to go very far to read the news, to hear terms like quiet quitting, or hear a labor shortage, or hear a variety of challenges that we are all facing in many industries in many different ways, gig economy, to attract, to retain, to compensate, and to grow our employee base for better service to our customers. And we've launched a brand new area, set of areas in Oracle Me, my experience, geared towards the employee. 
from boosters in recruiting, using artificial intelligence to help you recruit and attract, to ways that the employee can self-serve to have more uh, gigs uh, or kind of temporary assignments or what's known as gigs, to other areas in HCM to allow better talent management so that you can coach your employees and help retain them and help them grow to allow you to better retain your best talent. And again, these are just small examples, quarter after quarter after quarter that's coming out from HCM. And in the CX area or customer experience, what we're most focused on is really trying to automate the process of lead generation. So of course we have tremendous Salesforce automation, service marketing tools, but if you keep with that theme, how do we take small siloed processes and automate end to end? Our big focus is on how do you, when you know you have a customer from your ERP system and you know they have certain products, you can market to other customers who are essentially lookalikes. And not only can you market to them, but you have a built-in reference database. So what we're doing in customer experience is taking that tremendous assets we have in terms of email marketing, SMS marketing capabilities, uh, AI capabilities there to have it smart for you to market, and integrating that in a complete end-to-end -end process to give you better leads and better lead generation, and again, help you better service your customers. In addition to those solutions, we have a number of areas that we're investing on in to allow you, much like Javier talked about at Heathrow, become compliant either with regulations or internal audits or internal goals for investments for good. And many of these surface around our analytic capabilities through our analytic data warehouse. Analytic data warehouse integrated tightly with Fusion and accepting third-party data. And in each of the areas, analytics specifically geared not only at measuring the health of your business, but in supply chain, tracking, reducing of waste, your carbon footprint, and environmental impact of your supply chain. In HCM analytics, how your business is running, but also importantly, supporting a diversity in recruiting, in talent management, in promotions, and in compensation. And EPM analytics allow you to do the sophisticated planning from both a financial standpoint as well as an HCM standpoint. So brand new capabilities in all of those areas. And in addition to that, we're extremely proud that Oracle ourselves are focused on this with some key metrics, with the goal not only of our company but our data centers and our OCI infrastructure so that all of you can know that as customers of Oracle, our plan to be 100% renewable energy by 2025. You've heard about the good that we've done, the incredible work, frankly, with the vSafe capability and, and CDC. And I just want to make one point, because it's particularly, I had very, I had nothing to do with the, our, our progress there, but I was quite proud, because when you heard Larry say, we had a lot of successes, it's important to note, he wasn't talking about we, Oracle. I mean, we, Oracle was part of that we. He was talking about we, humans. He was talking about pharmaceuticals, government agencies, people who did it every day, and increasingly our focus is not only on our products, but on that global good, and you see some examples there. As one more example, and here's a customer in today's world, we have to have this hybrid so they won't be on stage, but we're going to have a short video talking about what they do from Nemours Children's Hospital. As a mother, uh, you know, I, I knew that something wasn't quite right. My daughter, she was diagnosed at two years of age with neurosensory bilateral hearing loss. You know, walking in the doors of Nemours, you kind of go, ah, <laughs> I know I'm gonna be taken care of and I know I'm gonna have a path forward. Nemours is special for the people and the purpose. Caregivers are the lifeblood of the organization the way that they have taken care of my daughter, I wanted to give back. As the associate CIO for Nemours, my job is about removing the transactional friction and making it easy for them to do what they do best. Oracle has been a great partner and have provided just so much guidance to us as we've been on this journey. The single platform and the anytime, anywhere access has been a huge win. 
Clinicians have a lot going on. They are very busy people. And so they need to be able to get to that information and all this other stuff is working and doing what it needs to do. And I don't need to worry about it. And I can focus on that child. Those caregivers have been so instrumental in my life and the care that they provided for my daughter that I think it's incredibly important that I have the opportunity to help them continue to do their best job, not only for me, but for all the other patients and families that are out there. I almost have to stop watching that video part way through. I don't think I can continue. I get a little choked up. But we, we want to do our small part in making caregivers spend time with their patients and eliminating what we do for them and automating that. And that's the bottom line. So this is the next part that I'm, I'm most proud of and that, frankly, our team is most focused on. Oracle moving from a product company to a services company and are committed to your success. And we do that in many different ways. First off, we've extended our ecosystem and we've added roles at Oracle we never used to have before. So we have over 20,000 certified partners that have implemented and trained in implementing our products to help you every day. Within Oracle, however, we have a new set of roles to ensure you are successful. From throughout the life cycle, customer success management, during the implementation cycle, implementation support management, and then a variety of different levels of support directly from development. Our CRE pro program, our centers of excellence, people who are geared and product experts who are there to advise you not just how the product works, but on best practices and how you should implement. And included in that is a well-defined process, both delivered through our consulting organization as well as our partners, so that we give you the best chance of success and you spend the least amount of time and the least amount of money getting the benefits that you've heard from some of our customers to get you to succeed. In addition to that, we've really transformed and work with many of you digitally through our Customer Connect. So Customer Connect is an online collaborative community of now almost 350,000 members. Every one of you that are customers, any one of your users can join Customer Connect. And they are, would be in a community with our development team, our product managers, our system implementer partners, and pretty much every other customer in the world. And what do we do there? It's a discussion forum. People post questions. People have ideas. People brag a little bit. Hey, we implemented this process, and here's what we achieved. And people give feedback and input. And people give us direct feedback to our development uh, uh, staff. We have a, a section in the forum called Ideas, which is really for all of you, tell us what you need. What is the idea? How can we make you more successful? And those hundreds of features I talked about that we deliver every quarter, 80 plus percent of those come directly from Customer Connect from ideas from customers. Customer logs it, our product managers respond, a system implementer partner says, no, no, we want it this way. Another customer chimes in, what about this? And collaboratively with this community, we get great ideas, and all of you get it every quarter. As an example of that, my last customer, my favorite customer, let me welcome on stage, this time as a customer, not as a partner, uh, Janine Carlucci. Janine is the head of digital and service experience at J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. Welcome, Janine. <laughs> Let's have a little fun together. How are you doing? Thank you. Should we just skip the script? Or are you... Well, you're my favorite. I'm the favorite. You're the favorite, exactly. So... Oh, sorry. I didn't know other customers were here. She's just one of kidding. my favorites. OK. Uh, Janine, everybody knows JP Morgan, but what you do and the role that you play and responsibility that you have. Can you give them, the audience some stats and your role within J.P. Morgan Chase? Sure, sure, would love to. So thanks so much, Steve, for having, having us. It was great to follow Takis. I mean, so proud to obviously work at this company when you think about what we're doing in so many ways. But my role is to treat our employees as customers. 
So think about the 300,000 people across the 70 countries that we service every single day. My job is to make sure that whether they're coming into the company and we're recruiting the talent all the way through to when they retire, we actually have to make that experience and those interactions as simple and seamless as possible. 300,000, 70 countries, and that's understating it, heavily regulated, heavily everything regulated. from very, 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 um, you know, back office people, people who are doing heavy analytics, people who work in the banks, everything. So, so all roles, whether you're a banker who's out there on the road and road warring for M&A deals, all the way through to a teller who's making sure that we make sure our consumer businesses continue to run, ops, call centers, every single technologists that are running through the organization. So we're definitely spreading the gamut of just about every role that we can find. So, so I mentioned some of the buzzwords that you hear in the press, right? In the, in the whether it's war on war for talent, or whether it's recruiting challenges, or labor shortage, qu you know, quiet quitting. I can't keep up with all of them. How is J.P. Morgan Chase, and how is your organization navigating that? And what are you what are you experiencing? So, we're we're when you think about how J.P. Morgan Chase overall is is doing work, we're constantly innovating, no matter what's going on. So we're going to get hit with any type of event, whether it's a hurricane one day. Uh, macroeconomic crisis in, in the Ukraine, all the way through to just a, a, a big event that we want to actually sponsor for bringing and, and delivering better services to our customers. So innovation is, I would say, one of the things that we're constantly stepping back and staring at, no matter what type of um, environment we're in. I would say specifically in the HR function, we're really trying hard now that we have a, a platform to, to work off of to really treat these employees like customers and make sure that we are very focused on how do we bring the power of the brand to the employee at J.P. Morgan Chase in, in, at every point that we can and at every interaction we can? And when you started the journey with us, and we, or we started the journey together, what were the things about Oracle? What did you have in mind at the time? Like, why Oracle at that point in time? And then, and then maybe you get into also, because we maybe glossed over it, the different stages that we've gone through so far. So <laughs> this journey for us started, I think, in 2016 or 2015. Yeah. Um, we, we were working very closely with our head of HR, Robin Leopold, very closely with our CIO, Lori Beer, spent a lot of time with Steve and Chris and Laura and so many folks that you probably all know so well. We, we took a real step back and said, how do we kind of really take 60 different platforms and bring them down to one, which was an interesting thing to do when you yeah. think about how global we are and the nature of the way we have to run in local markets. And then how do we actually step back and really look at the power of the data and what can we do to get to a more common data model and data structure? And as we were doing that, we thought about the, the pace that Oracle was working at on innovating their software far was outpacing the rest of the market. And that really helped us make a very clear decision, as well as the fact that we were very focused on cyber and, and data protection and making sure the security of the platform, since we were going from on-prem to public, was really going to be stable and solid. And clearly, that was a strong direction. And, and to give people an idea of scope, so scope beyond the 300,000 people and the 70 plus countries, you've now gone live in, I got to read this one to make sure I don't miss anything, core HR, recruiting, payroll, time and absence, talent management, and learning. And in a couple months, we just talked about incentive comp. So 60 platforms across that scope, across that many people. What are some of the benefits that you're seeing so far? So the, the fact that we can start with a common data model, I think, is one immediate benefit. So you saw a little bit on analytics and how do we power diversity differently, or how do we actually think differently about the way we're going to service our employees inside the organization and reduce the amount of touches. This platform, what, the war for talent, you know, the, the ability to create great career experiences. One of the things that JP Morgan does really, really well is whether you're in a different geography, been here for 30 years, been here for two months, we actually really try to make sure your career is really at the center of everything we're doing. And this gives us the ability to put the right talent with the right skills and the right chairs as they're coming in the door, but also really drive us into how do we win the war for talent and you know this new great resignation. How do we keep our people retained in the company for the future? So a lot of power sitting behind kind of us implementing the entire suite in its entirety, for sure. 
Now, we, we've done some tactical things together, a, a lot of times we've done some strategic. What, what are some of the things that come to mind on the innovation through the platform that, we, that we've worked on together and you've really helped us with? You know, one of the things that made, Steve, you know, yourself and Chris and others so um, close to us is the power of, of the cultures being so similar. And I think the concept of the partnership that we've been able to cultivate, so we designed together. So when I think about ORC and where ORC started, and I think about the amount of discussions that many folks in the room probably are gonna benefit from, 200 different changes that we made as we sat through oodles of design sessions and really listening to whether it was recruiters and what they needed, to candidates as they were coming in, to the power of how you were decommissioning Taleo. Like, there was a lot that sat underneath there that we've been doing together. That's one of the, the items. I do think whether it's learning, whether it's you know, different things that we're now going to start doing um, on how we're thinking through all the data and the way we can actually use data differently, I just think it's an, it's an amazing, amazing culture that we have together. And the one thing I would say is the quarterly release calendar forces companies to have to think totally differently now as you're going to SaaS. And when you have a partner like you, like you um, and by the way, I just want to say this, when things go wrong, we call Steve and Chris, and I just want to say that out loud because they were with us every step of the way on the journey. They've built the relationship with us. They've built the designs with us. They've tested with us. Even if we're in, you know, having some challenges, they're with us every step of the way. So I do think it's really important to pick a partner that actually is willing to kind of design with you for the future and really think about how you can make your employees be your customers at, the, at your organization. Yeah, if I didn't know you were on stage, I wouldn't have left my phone down there because I'd be nervous you might call. So we're, yeah, we're, It's true. And, and by the way, if the ORC that she mentioned is Oracle Recruiting Cloud, if anyone wants to see Oracle Recruiting Cloud, it's live, you can see it. Go to the J.P. Morgan Chase website, search for jobs. Please do not apply for jobs unless you want a job. But if you want to see what recruiting looks like live, there it is, it's up and running. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a great company and we have great jobs, so I <laughs> highly recommend you all go out there right now and apply for one of our positions that is a, a, across uh, the world. I'm going to get in big trouble. Okay, so <laughs> what, what's, what's next do you see for, for J.P. Morgan and our journey together? What, what, what are goals and, and you know, where, where would you guide us to help you more? Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we, we already do so much together. So I think this concept of continuing to listen to the employees, the managers, really be able to get our HR advisors to be powerful you know, consumers of the information that's sitting underneath here. But most importantly, really just bringing the power of the experience to bear. And I think once you get to the common integrated platform, we now have an opportunity, like the cloud is behind us, which is fantastic. We have an opportunity now to shift into our new joiner experience, our talent and career development experience, our service experience, and how do we want to make sure employees feel like the value that they would come to the brand of J.P. Morgan Chase lives each day you have. So clearly, we want to keep designing with you, we want to keep staying connected to you, we want to keep innovating with you, that's for sure. And, and let me give all of you a tip for running a project successfully at this scale, and just a credit. So, so Janine, and she mentioned Robin, the CHRO, they are on every Steerco meeting, every Steerco meeting. So these are people responsible for 300,000 people globally, and they are on time and ready to go and have read the slides. So believe me, when I join that meeting, I am prepared, I am on time, and I don't think I've ever beaten Robin to joining the meeting. Uh, so somehow CHRO, but, but the, the, the importance of this project and driving it, really, really, I mean, it's just incredible. And, it, you know, you guys earn your success by doing it that way. Well, thank you. Look, I, I would say this, top down matters. And at a company like J.P. Morgan Chase, whether Robin Leopold obviously is phenomenal, but the operating committee of J.P. Morgan Chase really put the power to invest. They're investing in their employees. And I think that's just something that makes the company just as wonderful as it is, but also makes us an, have an ability to win in the market. Fantastic. Thanks, Janine. Thanks, Can't Steve. Thank you enough. Good to see you. Pleasure. Nice you to see too. you. Okay, see, I told you, it's just like a pre-party. Every pre-party you've ever been to, you talk about ERP and HCM and CX, right? Every party I go to, that's what we talk about. It might be my flaw. Okay, what have we talked about? Fusion applications, bold new B2B commerce to fully automate banking, logistics, on through your ERP, and again, that's just the beginning and those are our first partners. We're going to extend more, and we're looking for your feedback on how to fully automate end-to-end. -end. With the applications you have, we have everything you need, full suite, based on the top technology that's always updating, 
and now a brand new application platform for you to extend that last mile and for you to develop just like we develop. Innovation that matters from focusing on diversity and inclusion, focusing on carbon footprint and analytics, having global impact, but also strategic solutions in healthcare, in employee retention, in marketing, sales, and service. And our commitment to your success and what we are most proud of in our organization is our focus on you, our customers. And I just thank you for all your attention today. Thank you for coming out. Enjoy the party and the concert tonight, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you very much.